Okay, we're back thinking about forces, and we want to connect this force notion to the motion of the object. Okay, so an object is experiencing forces. How does that impact the motion? And our goal there is simply, that's it, right? Connect forces to the motion ideas, acceleration, velocity, position, we talked about already. Okay, so we're going to start with what we call Newton's second law. And what Newton's second law says is that the acceleration of an object is proportional to the net force acting on that object. Net force is the vector sum of all the individual forces. So note that the net force is proportional to acceleration, not velocity. Okay, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, acceleration is also inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Okay, so here is Newton's second law as an equation. Acceleration A is sigma F over M. M is the mass. F in general stands for force. That sigma, that's the Greek letter sigma, sigma is our uh, indication of a summation. So we're adding up all the forces as vectors. That's sigma F, and that F has a vector symbol on it. Tells us what to do. Add up all the forces as vectors. Okay, so the sigma F thing represents the net force. It's the sum of all the forces, the vector sum of all the forces acting on the object. So you do have to account for directions of those forces. Now, that's a really good way to think about Newton's second law. A is the net force over the mass. So it's sort of a causal kind of thing, right? So you have an acceleration. Where does the acceleration come from? It comes from force is being applied to the thing. Now we often will apply Newton's second law like this. We'll just rearrange the equation. Same equation, just rearrange. The net force, the sum of all the forces, happens to be equal to m times a. Okay, so we'll often use it in that form, but you might want to remember that uh, it's productive to think about it as acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. Okay. Let's go back to Newton's first law. Newton's first law says, it's more of a qualitative thing, an object at rest tends to remain at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain in motion with a constant velocity, what does that mean? Constant speed and direction of motion, unless it is acted on by a non-zero net force. Okay, so let's dissect that a little bit, we'll turn it around a bit, and we'll say, okay, Here's one thing that says, if an object experiences no net force, its velocity will not change. We can break that down. If it is at rest and it's experiencing no net force, then it stays at rest. If it is moving and it experiences no net force, it keeps moving with constant velocity. That means keeps moving with a constant speed and a constant direction. Okay, So that might be a little bit surprising. This says, in order for something to keep moving with constant velocity, it must feel no net force. It can feel forces, but those forces must all balance. Okay, This is what's already moving. If you want something to go from at rest to moving, that's applying a force. You need that velocity to change. This is part two. An object's velocity changes only if it experiences a non-zero net force. And similarly, if it experiences a non-zero net force, then its velocity will change. And if you want to know exactly how its velocity changes, then you go back and you use Newton's second law. Okay? Figure out what the net force is, divide by the mass, and that's the, ob that's the object's acceleration, which is its rate of change, time rate of change of velocity. Okay, so just to hammer home this idea, you know, we think of at rest being one thing and moving being something different. But at rest is actually a special case of constant velocity motion. It's constant velocity staying at rest. It's just velocity with V equals zero. And as far as forces and free body diagrams are concerned, there's absolutely no difference at all between an object that remains at rest 
and an object that travels at constant velocity. Okay, the three body diagrams have to look the same. The net force on the object in both cases has to be zero for it to be either remaining at rest or traveling at constant velocity. So we, we think of those two situations as completely different, but as far as forces go, they are the same. Okay, and we'll have to kind of wrestle with that a little bit as we go forward. Okay, so that's a good introduction to those ideas.